Hello, in this Java programming video, we are going to look at BitSet, the BitSet class. So it, you can think of it like an array, but it's a very, very special array in that all it does is hold bit values, you know, true and false, one and zero, yes and no, that sort of stuff. And that's it, <laughs> really, that's all there is to it. Let me show you an example. So to use it, you need to import so import java.util.asterisk and then you want to do bit set and just do b1 equals you need to do new bit set and then specify the size of it. I'm going to specify the size of 4 just to keep things simple. I'm going to create another one directly afterwards for this b2. And now I'm going to do b1.set. And now we can set a particular index to be true. So if we just specify the index, it will set it to true. Or we can specify an index and a value. And we can specify ranges as well. I'll provide a link with all the different methods and functionality that you can utilize on bit sets. We'll just sort of keep it simple and just get you into the basic or basic foundations for now. Okay, so set. So I'll use the second method where I can specify the index, the so zero, and the value. So I'll specify true for this. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate this line. So there's four instances of it one, two, and three. So it's going to be all true. Let's do something similar for B2 now. Okay, that's pretty cool. And let's just print it out. Just this system. Println. Let's print out B1. Let's print out B2. There we go. Okay, so let's just put like B1. Like so. And let's just do something similar for B2 as well. Just so we can help identify them. Okay, that's pretty cool. So if we set, let's say this one to false, let's see what would happen. It disappears. It's because it's not on anymore. So that is what happens. Let's set this back to true. What can you do with this? So this is great if you want to keep track of some bits, maybe for some sort of data storage. Also, it's useful if you're going to do some sort of you know bit operation like and or XOR and bitwise objects provide all of that functionality. So we should do B1 dot let's say and so this one and b1 and b2 and assign it to b1 so b2 and now if i were to print out so only b1 will be changed because that's the object that's calling it b2 will remain unchanged now if i run it it's still the same because you know the and requires both values to be true so this and this is true this and this is true so forth and so forth i'll change this to a false however the first one's true in b1 but the first one in b2 is false so it should you know make it false hence why zero isn't appearing okay uh make this one false now that's pretty cool as well so as you can see they're disappearing in here as well and only the ones that are both true, which is one and three are on here. Now, let me show you another thing that you can do. So I'll comment this out. There's another method that you can use, which is all. So this checks if either one of them is on. And because with this one, it's on here, but it's off here, so it's technically true. It's on in both places, so that's fine. It's on here, but off here. Still on in one location, that's fine. On here, on here, hence why it provide, makes them all true. Let's show the final one, x or, ah, sorry, be lowercase, exclusive or, which means it requires one of them to be on, but that's it, only one can be true. The other one has to be false. Hence why we get the zero two this time, because true and false, that's fine one of them's true for one they're both true so it doesn't like that so it's going to set it to false true and false fine so you set it to true and true and true doesn't like that so you set it to false that's it for the bit set class if you have any questions as usual feel free to reach out there will be a link 
with this video that will provide more functionality to do with bit sets. If you have any questions, again, like I said, feel free to reach out and I look forward to seeing you in the next awesome Java video.